I'm Heath Lambert, and you're listening to Marked by Grace, a podcast applying the grace of Jesus to all of life. A few weeks ago on Marked by Grace, we talked about tattoos. We talked about drinking, and this week we are going to talk about cussing. I grew up with a lot of my family members feeling very comfortable using cuss words. It wasn't everybody. uh, It wasn't every single person I knew, but it was a commonality in my family with many of my relatives to deploy cuss words left and right. It was a very common occurrence. I heard them all the time growing up. I was not very old at all when I knew what all of the cuss words were, including what a lot of the, including the the worst ones. Um, I think that's a common approach to cussing is that it's just, it's great. It's a normal way to speak. It's a great way to speak. It emphasizes what we want to speak. On the other end of the continuum, uh, there are people who view cussing as very, very bad. Uh, It is, uh, you're never supposed to cuss. This is not something uh, you're ever supposed to do. And somewhere in the very broad middle is where I think most people are. And that is that uh, cussing isn't great, but it's acceptable in some circumstances. It's not for polite company, uh, but if you're alone with a really close friend, it's okay. If you step on one of your kids' Legos, it's okay. If you bang your head into the door when you're up going to the restroom at night, it's okay. We don't want to advertise it. We don't want to embrace it, but it's okay. I want to talk today uh, about whether or not Christians should cuss. Is that something we should do? Is it always wrong? Is it great? Or is it somewhere in the middle where there's some exceptions where it's allowed? Well, the first thing we got to do is figure out what a cuss word is. Um, For our purposes, I'm going to say that a cuss word is when you speak in a coarse, harsh, vulgar type way. Coarse, harsh, vulgar type way. There's several different categories of language uh, that we turn into cuss words. You don't have to worry on the podcast if you've got little ears nearby. I'm not going to use any examples uh, of cuss words, but there are four different uh, several, I'll say several different categories of of language that we turn in uh, to cuss words. We uh, we tend to speak in coarse ways about the body and body functions. So we're we know of cuss words that are coarse ways to speak about the body and body functions. We know of cuss words that are coarse ways to speak about eternity. Now, this is where I, I can use an example without uh, without getting into a problem. So Christians believe in hell. Uh, We believe in hell as that place where you go when you don't repent of your sins and trust in Jesus Christ. Uh, Well, that word, which is a legitimate place, which is, uh, which is a location that's described in hell, we use that as a cuss word when we speak in a coarse way about eternity. Uh, there are also uh, categories where we speak in coarse ways to express surprise. Might be a good surprise, might be a bad surprise, uh, but one thing that uh, cuss words do is they speak in coarse ways, vulgar ways, to communicate surprise. And then a final category we could talk about are coarse ways to speak about God. We speak uh, about God in a way that is coarse, harsh, vulgar, out of place. In each of these categories and any more that we would consider, we would be taking a legitimate category. We'd be taking something that is a legitimate thing to talk about, and we would be stripping it away from its good context and putting it into a bad context, a coarse, harsh, or vulgar context. Now, the question is, can we ever do that? Can Christians cuss? And what I want to say is no. That is to say, in in that continuum that I painted for you a few moments ago, where it's great, it's fine under certain circumstances, or it's always wrong, I, I want to encourage us as Christians to occupy the place on the continuum where we would say it is always wrong. And the reason for that is because it says so in the Bible. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 4, uh, as just one place we could go to, there are others, but as just one, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 4 says, Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place. But instead, let there be thanksgiving. Now, I want you to notice here 
The Apostle Paul says, let there be no filthiness, foolish talk, or crude joking. He doesn't feel any need to give you a list of examples. There were, there was coarse, harsh, vulgar, crude language in the ancient world. Those words would have sounded different than our words sound today in 21st century English. Uh, but, but there were coarse, harsh, and vulgar words that were used in the ancient world. The Apostle Paul feels no pressure to give us examples of what they are. He doesn't say, hey, don't use words like this. His, his point is, look, you should not speak in filthy, foolish, crude, coarse, vulgar ways. You shouldn't use these words. You don't need me to tell you what they are. You know what they are. The reality is that in every time, in every place, every culture cordons off some words that are improper, that are impolite, that are coarse, harsh, and vulgar. The Apostle Paul says, when you know what those words are, you should not use them. Uh, the reason you shouldn't use them, he doesn't just say not to use them. He doesn't say just don't do it. He says don't do it. Let there be no. But he says why? They're out of place. Let there be no filthiness, foolish talk, or crude joking, which are out of place. In Ephesians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul is talking to people who have been transformed by the blood of Jesus. He says, you are living a different life. You are engaged in a new vocation as you live life on this planet. And that ought to be reflected in everything you do, and it ought to be reflected in what you say. It is out of place for Christians to speak in coarse, harsh, and vulgar ways, the same way people do who don't know Jesus Christ. It's just wrong. It's out of place. It's not what we ought to do. We can say even more than that. Uh, we can say that there's more at stake in just it being out of place. And that's one other passage that we can look at in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Jesus says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. This is why if, if you're one of these people who says just sometimes when you got to say a cuss word, sometimes when you trip on the steps or bang your head or drop a jar in the kitchen or a kid does something or somebody's mean to you, there's just sometimes when a cuss word is the only word that'll do. And what you just said is you described your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. There's sometimes when a cuss word is the only word that'll do because your heart isn't right. Uh, the reality is that a heart that is transformed by Jesus is going to love to speak the way Jesus speaks and is going to hate to speak the way the world speaks. This doesn't mean uh, that... Uh, if you slip and say a cuss word, if you get angry and say a cuss word, it doesn't mean you're not saved. It means you've said something that is out of place and you ought to repent. It means you need to ask Jesus for grace to change from language that is coarse, harsh, and vulgar to language that is pure, gentle, peaceable, and reflects the grace of Jesus. Jesus.